Hey everybody, what's up? Uh, this is Mr. Fournier, and we are going to go over this graphing motion kinematics worksheet really quickly. Particularly, we're going to go over just some um, uh, uh, parts of it, but uh, the main crux of this video is going to be translating position uh, versus time graphs to velocity versus time graphs, as well as velocity versus time graphs to acceleration versus time graphs. So let's start with a bit of review here. So um, we got this car that's traveling at a constant 20 meters per second for 10 seconds, and it asks us to uh, record and plot uh, <clears throat> the data here. So uh, if it's traveling at 20 meters per second, that means after one second, it's going to be going 20 meters. And after two seconds, it's going to be going 40 meters. And after three seconds, it'll be going 60 meters, etc., 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 as it goes down until after 10 uh, seconds it is going 200 meters so then we can plot all this data and we get this best fit line here uh, and then it asks us to calculate the slope of that line so to calculate the slope it's going to be my rise over run but my uh, second point is 10 seconds comma 200 meters and my initial point is just going to be zero zero so that means I'm going to have d2 minus d1 over t2 minus t1. By the way, I apologize for my voice. I don't know what the heck is wrong with me. Uh, so uh, d2 is 200. d1 is 0. t2 is 10. And t1 is 0. So that means 200 divided by 10. Those zeros cancel out and it gives me 20 meters per second. Uh, which is, of course, exactly what I got uh, up here. So hopefully that makes sense to you. This is going to be 20 meters per second. How does it compare with the uh, velocity given in number one above? It is exactly the same. Uh, both rates are 20 meters per second because they told me my object was traveling at 20 meters per second for 10 seconds at a constant rate. All right, let's keep moving. Then it says... Now make a table showing the car's velocity at the end of each second. So here's the car's velocity at the end of each second. If it travels at 20 meters per second for 10 seconds, after one second, it's going to go 20 meters per second. After two seconds, it's going to be 20 meters per second, etc., etc., etc. So uh, uh, there, there you go. So I'm basically just going to get, if I graph a velocity versus time graph, I'm just going to get uh, a, a line that's traveling at 20 meters per second the whole time. And uh, so the first thing they ask for me is find the area under the curve for the first five seconds. So for my graph, five seconds is about here. So to find the area under that curve, it's base times height. So my base is five seconds. My height is 20 meters per second, which gives me an area of 100 meters. So 100 meters. How does this compare to the displacement after the first five seconds and number one above? Well, five seconds is right here. What's the displacement? It is whatever this is, which I go over, and sure enough, it's at value 100 meters right here. So once again, they are the same. And that is because the displacement of a velocity, uh, the area under the curve of a velocity versus time graph gives me the displacement. Said so very eloquently right here. The area under the curve of velocity versus time graph is the displacement. In a bit of review, the slope of a distance of a displacement versus time graph, or I rather should say a position versus time graph, is the velocity. And the slope of a velocity time graph is the acceleration. The only thing we have not really told you in this class so far is that the area under the curve of an acceleration versus time graph is actually the change in velocity. So that's a bit of new information there for you. Enjoy. So next up, it gives us uh, uh, a position versus time graph. It just gives us this random graph here, doing all sorts of fun stuff. And uh, I'm going to skip over this stuff. 17, don't worry about. It's a bit of a philosophical question. 
Uh, but 11 through 16, there are my answers right there. Um, for 18, however, it says make a velocity versus time graph of this position versus time graph. So the question is, what is a, uh, how can I get the velocity out of a position versus time graph? And the answer is the slope. The slope uh, of a position time graph gives us the uh, velocity versus time graph. So uh, in that case then, I'm gonna find the slope of this position versus time graph and then translate that to a velocity versus time graph. So, um, and now, uh, where all these points here have these, uh, uh, they have these different sections. See how it goes from one constant velocity to another? And then after 10 seconds, it goes to another velocity. And then after 15 seconds, it goes to another new velocity. And then after 20 seconds, it goes to another velocity. So I'm going to call these, uh, these um, points A, B, C, D, E. And it's best to just split them up to where they drastically change in acceleration. Any sharp changes in, its, in acceleration should be uh, split up when you, are, um, when you are translating uh, uh, position versus uh, time graphs and velocity versus time graphs. So for section A now, I can then start my little uh, translation and say, uh, what is the velocity uh, for section A? What is the velocity for section A? And well, the velocity is just the slope, and the slope is going to be well. I got it's slope is always rise over run. So my rise is five meters. My run is five seconds. So five meters over five seconds, that's gonna be one meter per second. So that's my first velocity for the first five seconds is one meter per second. And because it's a straight line, it is a constant velocity. So that means it's gonna be one meter per second for section A right here. So I go to one meter per second and I can draw my line right across like that. So my velocity for section A is one meter per second. Now it's time to go to section B, which is between five and 10 seconds. So for section B, I can see all I got is this horizontal line, and hopefully you know that the slope of a horizontal line is just zero. So that means um, it's gonna be a constant zero velocity right here, and there you go. Oftentimes we draw these little dotted lines in between these drastic changes in acceleration. Um, no real need to, but it just shows a connection to the graphs, but there's a very abrupt change in acceleration right here. All right, next up is to go to section C, which is from 10 to 15 seconds. And as we can see, we do have a slope here. Um, I'm just going to go with the rise over run I'm not gonna pick points or anything like that. So uh, we're gonna start here and we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we got a, a, a rise of 10 meters over and then a run of one, two, three, four, five seconds. That's gonna give us two meters per second. So for section C, the velocity is two meters per second and again, it's a straight line, so it's a constant velocity. So it's gonna be a constant two meters per second. So that means I'm gonna make another line right here, and I can draw dotted lines to show that connection. <clears throat> so I still have 15 to 20 seconds here. Again, I have a horizontal line, so that's zero meters per second there uh, for my velocity there. So I go back down to zero. And then lastly, my duration for section E is all of this from 20 to 30 seconds. And here, uh, again, I'm gonna go with the rise over run scenario. Take away this and go, okay, the rise is going down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I go down. 15 
and then I go to the right one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I go to the right ten, and that gives me fifteen over ten, which is three over two, or one point five meters per second. Negative. 1.5 meters per second. Do not forget the negative. So that means for this last moment here, um, I'm going to go to negative 1.5. So I got somewhere around here. And there we go. I draw that. I can make my dotted lines. And that's the end of my velocity time graph. So that's what we should get right there. Moving right along onto this new velocity versus time graph, they're asking us to make an acceleration versus time graph out of this. For questions 19 through 27, you can see my answers here. Um, and I will post the PDF of this to Haiku so that you can see uh, my answers. I've also got work here showing you um, that to find the displacement during these intervals, I'm taking the area under the curve uh, and you should be showing your work as well. So, all right, I'm making an acceleration versus time graph from a velocity versus time graph. And hopefully you are all well aware that to find the acceleration from a velocity versus time graph is just the slope of this velocity versus time graph. And already they've split it up for me in sections A, B, C, D, and E. So I'm going to start with section A. And I got to find the acceleration. Well, the acceleration is just the slope. Again, the slope is the rise over the run. And the rise here is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the run, so the rise is 5. The run is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <clears throat> and that's going to give me 1 and the units will be meters per second squared for the uh, acceleration. So that's going to be one meter per second squared. So I go down here, and the acceleration is constant. It's a straight line right there. So um, because it's a straight line, I'm going to say one meter per second in a constant. It's going to look something like that. All right, moving on to section B, which is right here from 5 to 10 seconds. Well, I got this right here. Again, I'm going to do the rise over the run. The rise starts here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I got uh, a rise of 10 meters per second and a run of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to be... 2 meters per second squared. So this is 2 meters per second squared. So I go back to my graph here, and I got a constant 2 meters per second squared because that slope was a straight line. It's a terrible line. That's even worse, but whatever. There we go. And again, we tend to connect these with dotted lines. So on to section C from 10 to 15 seconds. Section C is pretty easy. I got to find the slope of that horizontal line. Slope of any horizontal line is zip, nothing, zero. So the slope of C is zero. So all of a sudden my acceleration drops to zero. And again, connect it with that line. Now from 15 to 20 seconds, that'll be section D. Ooh, now my acceleration is going down. I have a negative slope which means negative acceleration. So again, uh, I'm going to do rise over run. So the rise starting here is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But it's negative 5 because I'm going down. So it's negative 5 because I'm going down. And the run is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So negative 5 divided by 10 is negative 0.5 meters per second squared. And that's what that slope is right there. Again, the slope is a straight line, though, so it is a constant negative 0.5 meters per second squared acceleration. And so I can graph appropriately to about right here. 
and that's my graph right there. Dotted line, etc. Uh, oh, sorry. So it's not from zero. It's not from 15 to 20. It's from 15 to 25. 15 to 25. It's going to 25 seconds here. All right. So my last point is E, which I have to find the slope of. Uh, so that's from 25 to 30 seconds. And so again, I got to find the slope. So that's the rise over run. The rise starting here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But I went down. So it's going to be negative 5 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 seconds to the right. That gives me a slope of negative 1 meter per second squared. And that's my slope right there, which is my last slope. Again, it is a straight line. So it's going to be a constant negative 1 meter per second squared. So I'm going to go from here to here, make my dotted line. And that, let's make this a little cleaner. All right, not bad. So that is my uh, uh, acceleration versus time graph for this particular position, uh, um, velocity versus time graph. So <clears throat> starting next week, we will start on uh, uh, these graphs and how we translate them. It's going to be a little more qualitative, though, as opposed to these other two graphs, which was quantitative because we could calculate these particular slopes. So we're going to uh, ask you for a little bit uh, greater sophistication starting next week. So thank you. And hopefully this is helpful. All right.